Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be walking you through the absolute best Fortnite settings to use in Chapter 4 Season 2. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, not a lot has changed this season in terms of graphics or performance options. There are some new things, which yes, obviously, I'll cover in depth, but the main changes this season actually come with the gameplay. You see, outside of the game's audio being really, really bad, in-game FPS is at an all-time low this season, especially when you look at the Mega City POI. That thing even destroyed destroys my frames. That is why today, I will not only be going over all the normal settings, stuff like your colorblind mode options, the most optimal graphics settings, some new audio tweaks, but I'll also be showing off some really useful FPS tricks, that way when you load up and go to Mega City, your FPS won't be dropping to double digits. You're welcome. So as always guys, drop a like down below if you enjoy, subscribe, use code Jerrion to support me, and without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, so to start us off, I have to address the elephant in the room, Chapter 4 Season 2 Audio. I don't know about you guys this season, but I have seen an insane amount of people complaining about their audio in-game. Some people in Season 2 cannot hear footsteps, other people cannot hear players breaking their walls. Never in my 5 years of playing the game religiously have I seen this many people complain about in-game audio, myself included. Initially, I thought I could solve this problem by maybe changing my audio quality to high, or going back to Chapter 1 using bass boosted audio, but after trying both of them in chapter 4, I realized that neither of them solved the issue at hand, a lack of actual audio. So you guys know what I did? I actually went into the in-game audio settings in Fortnite, and I tried a cheeky little option that I remember from a long time ago, something called 3D headphones. I remember exactly when this setting first came out, I told all of you guys not to use it, I'm pretty sure it only used to work with like really expensive headphones, and even then, it was pretty damn bad. But no troll guys, in chapter Chapter 4 Season 2, it's actually pretty damn decent. What 3D Headphones essentially does is it provides for something called 3D Audio Spatialization. Fortnite kinda describes it in-game, but just to kind of sum it up, it basically helps you and allows you to locate sound, yes, locate it, much more precisely. So like, say if someone is running to the left of you in-game, normally what you'd get is the visual audio cue, you would hear them in that general direction, but through both of your headphones. Meanwhile, with the 3D Headphones settings on, you're mainly gonna hear them in the left side of your headset, just like if you had on surround sound. But it's actually way, way better. You'll be able to hear way more accurately if someone's on your wall, if someone's above you, to the side of you, behind you. All of it comes through your headset, but it basically tells you, like, where they are, just with sound. And yes, guys, I know that sounds extremely simple and almost, like, dumb. I feel like all of us know what surround sound is, even though this isn't technically that. But I'm telling you guys right now, the next time you play Arena or even Creative, turn on the 3D headphone settings and try it out. It works extremely, extremely well. Just listen to this. The one sort of caveat for 3D headphones though, which those of you who are not listening to this with headphones just realized, is that you do need a stereo headset for this setting to work. I'm pretty sure the majority of you guys on PC and even on console, you should already have a stereo headset. This headset that I'm wearing right now, these HyperX gaming ones, they are a stereo headset. The majority of gaming headsets nowadays are stereo ones, so they will work with 3D headphones. But if you're someone that uses like AirPods or I don't know, maybe you don't use headphones, you just use speakers, please put on some headphones and try this setting out. It's crazy. So yeah guys, that is my own fix for all of the Chapter 4 Season 2 audio issues. I feel like Epic must have seen this coming and just purposely made 3D headphones really good. I remember when it first came out, it was terrible, and now all of a sudden, it's just actually viable and decent. So like, did they do this on purpose so we would all switch to it? I don't know. But again, try it out. Let me know how 3D headphones works for you guys, especially if you're on console. And now with that out of the way, let's move on to the rest of the in-game Fortnite settings. Hello, I'm over here on the bottom right because we're gonna be going into our settings and you guys always complain that I block the ones on the left. So you know what? We're finally moving the webcam only for the settings video. And where we're actually gonna begin is at the top with the display settings. Yes, we're finally going in order. So beginning with window mode, full screen is always gonna be your best option. Window full screen honestly is not that bad. Like you probably won't notice that much of a difference, but full screen will get you the lowest amount of 
input delay. Please don't use windowed. And then for resolution, this is also one that you can just leave as default on 1920 by 1080. I've shown you guys in the past that the other two options, 1600 by 900 and 1280 by 720, they're really not that bad. Like if I apply this, oh, what did I just do? Well, I don't really know what that was, but this is 1600 by 900. Let me know if you guys could even see like a resolution difference. I can definitely notice that it's a lot more pixelated compared to 1920 by 1080. And I mean, no matter what the res is, if it's less pixels than 1920 by 1080, you will get better FPS. My FPS while looking inside of the Mega City is, oh, there are some FPS drops, not too bad. I mean, there's just so much shit inside this city. Guys, quick little tip, but I kind of just realized why my FPS when looking at Mega City was bad. I just updated my drivers and I actually forgot. Look at this. It had the balance settings on, not the optimized ones because I've been playing FIFA. Ooh. So what I'm going to do is quickly optimize these. I have shown these many, many times and I'll show them once I'm done optimizing them. All I'm doing is turning them all to like prefer maximum performance, turning the optimizations on. Oh, and remember that. So yeah, these are the ones that I was not using. I wasn't even planning on showing this because it's not actually in Fortnite. But here are the best NVIDIA control panel settings, which I wasn't even using. Back to what I was saying. But we're gonna stay on 1920 by 1080 and apply. VSync is a setting that you pretty much never want to have on in game. Bro, what is that sound? This is why I don't do the settings while in an actual game. I would only ever turn on VSync in your actual NVIDIA settings. In the NVIDIA control panel, that's where I would turn it on, not here. And again, there's just, there's so many random sounds, bro. Frame rate limit, you want one above your monitor's refresh rate. So you can see all of them over here. There's a bunch of different options. If you're on a 60 hertz monitor, put it at 120. If you're on 144 hertz, put it at 160 FPS. I do have a 360 hertz monitor, but because the way like these recordings work, it gets really buggy when it's 360 FPS. So I actually play 240 hertz and I use 240 FPS for my FPS cap. It's kind of confusing, but it works. And I mean, the majority of pros use 240 since 360 the FPS is like impossible to get in end games. But either way, the final option we have the rendering mode. Yes, guys, like always, the best rendering mode is gonna be performance. I actually block it, but it is called lower graphical fidelity now. I don't know why Epic changed it. For those of you wondering, yes, we will have to switch to DX12. DX12 has all of the secret performance mode settings, settings that actually do affect performance mode, but they're not here. You can see there's barely any options for performance mode. But you know, after we switch to DX12, we're gonna switch back. Performance mode is the best rendering mode. It's gonna get us the best FPS pretty much no matter what your PC is. You can see I'm on stable 240. Definitely don't have dual PC with a 4090. But I mean, I say that and like, I mean, I guess I have stable 240 when I run inside. It's just looking into it. It's not the greatest. I don't know. Let's just go to the next batch of in-game Fortnite settings. I made sure to come to Steamy Springs for this next bunch of settings because these, these are going to be your graphic settings, the ones that actually make the game look nice. And beginning with your brightness, brightness, I think this season, you can just leave this at default at 100%. Currently, the sun is going down. Oh, it just dropped like 10% brightness without me changing anything. But I mean, your monitor is going to have a different brightness. There's your in-game brightness. There's also all the different like times of day. Just leaving it on default is fine. And that also goes with you user interface contrast. Remember guys, this only applies to the settings pages. So like, you could put this on max, your game will look the exact same. It does not affect your actual in-game. I mean, I guess it does affect your menu, but that's kind of your settings as well. Let me know what you guys have this on. I leave it on 1x. But something that actually a lot of people have changed this season, including a lot of pros, is their colorblind mode. So what I personally use is just off the straight up default. But something I've seen a lot of pros use, which I have been trying a little bit is Deuteronope 5. I think it's because a lot of the map, like you can see the pink, a lot of it is really, really bright. Look at that blue. I have this on Deuteronope and still the colors are like popping. So if you really want to be able to like distinguish the dark blues and the greens and everything, Deuteronope is a really good option. I saw FaZe Bizzle using it, obviously Mongrel. I think even Clix was using it for a decent amount of time. This is like the only colorblind mode I would use because Tritonope, this is night and you can see 
It just be looking way too bright. Look at that blue. Oh, heck no. And then Protonope. Protonope isn't bad, but it kind of just looks like default. With almost like the green and the blues kind of the same color. So basically, choose between the two options of Deuteronope 5 or colorblind mode off. Strength does not matter. I'm gonna stick with the normal because I would get way too many comments asking what colorblind mode I'm on. So those are your graphics settings. We just did display. And now we'll do the graphics quality settings for performance mode. We're also gonna do them for DX12 after this, but I want to do them. I want to do them in creative. Hey. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, guys, I do not know why I'm playing on NA East since, like you can see, my ping is at zero and I am moving through these free builds. But they changed the servers for arena and tournaments. They changed it all to NA Central where I'm 45 ping. <laughs> oh, man. Regardless, we have some graphics quality options to look at, starting with 3D res. 3D res, guys, I've said this before, this is essentially the same thing as your resolution. It's just 100% is basically 1920 by 1080, and then the percentage you put it at is like 93% of 1920 by 1080. So if you're good at math, you could actually work out like 1600 by 900. Someone commented down below, it's probably like between 60 to 70%, but you could drop this all the way down to 25% here is what that looks like. Can you guys, <laughs> can you guys see how blurry that is? It is really pixelated. So I recommend just using 100% for your 3D res. If you're gonna change your resolution, do it on the resolution at the top in the display settings. As for view distance, guys, I always say just put this on near. The only other time you'd use maybe like medium is, it would pretty much only be if you're gonna use high meshes because I'm pretty sure still, if you put this on high, you need the medium view distance for the actual high meshes because because near view distance, it makes it... Why is this still a thing? It just makes no sense. Like, I get why it makes sense for DX12. Hopefully, you guys know that, that the only way to use mobile builds on DX12 is to have near view distance, and the only way to use high meshes is to have medium or higher. But, like, why does it work when I have high meshes selected on performance mode? It should not be a thing, especially that I can change the meshes in-game. Oh, I have not used high meshes in so long. <laughs> this is bad. Oh. But anyways, use near view distance because low meshes is gonna be your best option. Textures, again, put this on low. You can try out epic because epic and high, it actually can give you better input delay. And I know it sounds weird, but it's some weird thing with like the advanced options, which I'll show later. So try out high textures if you're not getting the best input delay. Not FPS, your input delay. Otherwise, auto download high resolution textures, turn off. High resolution texture reminders, also turn off. And then meshes, you're gonna have to back out you cannot be in game to turn this to low. But turn that sucker to low, low meshes all the way. And finally, advanced graphics, turn show FPS on because we wanna be able to see our FPS. Remember though, guys, we're not done yet because we have to go to the secret advanced performance mode settings that for some reason you cannot see when you have performance mode selected. You have to go to rendering mode, switch to DX12. We're gonna switch back to performance mode since that's the best rendering mode. But go to DX12, press apply, it actually now gives you the option to restart immediately so we're gonna press restart now nice and now while i'm on dx12 which look i have mobile builds on you can tell because the builds jiggle that's my favorite thing about dx12 or dx11 it's like smacking an ass Seriously though, guys, look at the graphics quality options we now have. There's just so many. Why is this a thing? There's even extra advanced graphics options. I forgot about those. But beginning back at the top of the graphics quality options, auto set quality, just do not ever press that. It's gonna spit out all really high and just bad options. Instead, what you're gonna wanna do is go to the quality preset, change it to low, yes, low, and just hear me out for a second. Anti-aliasing and super resolution, turn this off. There's just Look at all these options. There's way too many of them. 3D res, put this back to 100%. That is gonna turn the quality preset to custom. You don't have to do that yourself. Shadows, turn off. Global illumination, turn off. Reflections, off. These four settings we already covered, so just put them on what they were. Effects, turn to low. Post-processing, turn to low. And then dynamic 3D resolution, this should already be off. Temporal super resolution, this should also just be grayed out. Like, if you don't have the anti-aliasing on, it's not gonna 
going to change anything. So leave that all on the lowest settings possible. And then for the advanced graphics, use GPU crash debugging, turn this off. It will impact your FPS if you have it on. So turn that off. Latency markers also turn off. That doesn't work anymore. Back in the day, it used to tell us our input delay. And finally, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, put this to on plus boost. That is going to get you the lowest input delay. And that coupled with high textures, which I tried to explain before, put it on high and try it out. That should actually get you much lower input delay. Your game will feel like snappier. It's really weird to describe, but I promise you, your game will feel better. Or well, maybe not all of you guys, but some of you. Oh, in my game, NA East just feels so nice. <laughs> Please don't put me on central, man. Please. <laughs> Oh wait, I almost forgot. Once you're done with all of these settings, press the rendering mode, go back to performance mode. Performance mode is the best, so go back to it. Don't forget to do that. That's like kind of important. But actually, speaking of NA Central, something really quickly that I want to show. On the game settings, if you're on NA East or NA West, look at my NA Central ping. 45, boys. 45. If you queue up for Arena on NA East, look what actually happens. Look at this, boys. It's a trick. I am on 45 ping in Arena because Arena is now only Central servers. Tournaments and Arena, if you're on NA, they are all on Central. So if you guys want lower ping, go check out this video I made on how to lower your ping. It shows you all the different window optimizations, the different sort of ethernet and like wired connection tricks you could use. My ping really is not too bad. I know a lot of you are going to have way worse than 45, especially you Canadians. But man, do I miss zero ping? The answer is yes. <laughs>